Hello my friends. This is from my blog, my website. My name is uh, Roberto Gagliardi. I'm a grace believer and ambassador for Christ. Now a confession to make between friends. <laughs> I first believed in Christ in 1972. I'm 74. And for 40 years of my life, I didn't know this, that now I published in 2021. I didn't know that the Lord Jesus Christ has two ministries recorded in the King James Bible. I didn't know because nobody ever taught me, neither did I see the need, the necessity to study the word of truth. Of course, I talk about the King James Bible, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, yes, by doing this, rightly dividing the word of truth, okay, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, King James, because many Bibles, which are not Bibles, really, they don't say study, they say make an effort, be diligent, but reality says study to show the self approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Once you do this and you study the prophetic and the heavenly and the mystery program, you will see this. Prophetic program, Christ's earthly ministry. He has 12 apostles, Peter, John and James being the three fundamental ones. He is recording the red letters, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. The main gospel preach it is the gospel of the kingdom his mission the mission of the Lord in his own words in Matthew 15 24 but he answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel now this is another verse that I never pay attention okay let me tell you in those 40 years since 1972 in denominations, I mean denomination and others, uh, most of the time I was not using the King James Bible. So if you don't use the King James Bible, which are the pure preserved word of God, you will not find exactly this word as the Lord said, when he said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hmm. Now, I am not the Lord sheep of the house of Israel. And actually, since Acts 9, there are no lost sheep of the house of Israel. So really, it was not sent to us, but to them. The great commission that he gave to the twelve, in Matthew 28:19 Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20 Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Wow. <laughs> and that's why. Sadly, all the denominations, modern denominations, all those who abandoned Paul since he was still alive, he said to Timothy, this, you know, that all those in Asia abandoned me, they embraced this ministry, which is not to us, not to, not to us, not about us. Practically, this ministry, this great commission, is not active. Hmm. I know that this is going to create a sense of rebellion and... He said, what is he talking about? Cognitive dissonance. All of a sudden, all your life, if you've been going in denominations, you've been told that this is the great commission, and possibly you obey this, 
and you got baptized in water, you confess his name and this and that, when in reality it's not happening. Why? Let's see. The main gospel in the red letters, John 3, from verse 1 onwards, and there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Okay? The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do this miracles that thou do except God be with him. If sometimes I pronounce badly, please, merciful, be, be kind. <laughs> Italian, can't speak English very well. I, I make an effort, I need to preach anyway. And Jesus answered, said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. So, Jesus answered and said unto him, to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, in truth, in truth, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? He's thinking in the flesh, you know. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So Christ is giving the two steps. You need to see the kingdom that was coming then. You got to be born of water and Spirit. You need to be born again to enter into the kingdom of God physically. The kingdom of God was coming physically on earth. Jesus meet the King. And then he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Perfect definition, of course, is the Lord. And then he says, marvel not. Now play, pay attention, please. Marvel not that I say unto thee, Nicodemus, ye, plural, the nation, ye must be born again. When was the last time you heard this? In the denomination they tell you that you must be born again. But Jesus said, Marvel not, I send to thee, one on one, Jesus and Nicodemus. Ye, the nation, must be born again. The wind blows where it lists, and thou hear the sound thereof. I cannot tell whence it comes and whither it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and know not these things? Shouldn't Nicodemus, being a Pharisee, a master of Israel, a doctor of the law, know that God had promised a better, a new covenant? If you go to a Jeremiah 31, 31 is perfect. A covenant where the Spirit of God will fill Israel, every believer in Israel, and cause them to walk in their laws, in their statutes. He should have known, but he didn't. Makes me think of many people that go to church, buildings, denominations, they might have a Bible, very rarely King James, under their arms. They sit there one hour, one hour and a half, whatever it is, two hours in certain places, very zealous, three hours. Uh, I've been there. <laughs> to hear <clears throat> messages that are not addressed to us, but to them, prophetic program. <clears throat> but Jesus says, I do a master of Israel and know not these things. Very, very, I said today, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye, Israel, receive not our witness. What is 
we. Why Jesus speaking we? Because Jesus is not alone. The Father is with him and the Spirit of God is with him. It's the Godhead speaking. If I told you earthly things, because this is the earthly program, okay? If I told you earthly things and believe not, and ye, 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 Israel, only you, the, ye, believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Ah, put yourself in the shoes of Nicodemus one moment. Even though he was a Jew, nothing to do with you. That's the Lord himself talking to him. That's the Christ of God. That's the Word incarnated. God in the flesh. Fully God, fully man. If I told you earthly things, and ye believe not. Did they believe? The nation didn't believe. Except the little flock, the twelve. And if you have, I don't know how many other disciples, but very little percentage of the native population. They didn't want him to, to be king. They're king. They had Caesar, the Roman Empire. Hmm. If I told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? The heavenly things was a mystery hidden God. Christ knows it. He's not teaching it. And then he's telling, and no man has ascended up unto a, uh, um, sorry, 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 I told you my English. And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. I, I think Nicodemus at this point is freaking out really heavily. <laughs> Christ is saying, no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven, is there, but is in heaven. The Son of Man is him. <laughs> and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believes in him should not perish by everlasting life. And this is the famous gospel, John 16. Everybody thinks that this is my gospel. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Do you see here in this verse the cross, the grave, the resurrection, the blood? See, the God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That whosoever believes, whosoever believes only in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believes on Him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already. <sighs> because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, I know many people that believe in the name of the only begotten Son of, of God. They are not saved. What do you mean? Because they think that this gospel is to them, is about them, but... The gospel of the name is the gospel to Israel. They had to believe that Jesus Christ was indeed the Messiah. The prophesied Messiah. There are more than 300 prophecies concerning the first coming of Christ to Israel. The prophet Moses even said, you know, the Lord himself shall rise up among you and a prophet like me unto him. You got to listen to him. If you don't, you're gonna be thrown out. It's the same thing, you know. There is no reference whatsoever to his death on that cross for our sins, his burial, and his glory resur resurrection for our justification. And this is the condemnation. The light is coming to the world. Jesus Christ is light. 
God is love, life, and light. And men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that's that that's evil. Sometimes I read too fast, you know. If I even read English. <laughs> For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither cancel the light, lest his deed should be reproved. Now, I'm not going to read all of this, but one thing I can tell you, this gospel is the gospel of the name. This gospel is the gospel of the kingdom. I don't know if you know this, I hope you did, that we are not in the kingdom. I don't know if you pay attention to the fact that they reject the king and the kingdom. Who? Israel. He even tell them. So, they didn't get born again. On water and spirit. Except, this little flock, Peter and the eleven. Interesting. Uh, by the way, this is Jesus Christ. It's important to study these red letters gospels. They call it red letters because somebody decided to print in red the word of Jesus. But the reality, all the scriptures are the words of Jesus. From Genesis to Revelation. But, okay. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You have to know who he is, what he's accomplished, why he did what he did, what kind of gospel he was preaching and commanded them to preach and teach to the nation of Israel. So that then when you come to Paul, you know that Paul is talking about the same Christ, but now he's talking about Christ's heavenly ministry. That we can call the revelation of the mystery. So we have the Apostle Paul and we have 13 letters or epistles. We have Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon. And the gospel is the gospel of grace. Not the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of grace. So what's the difference? Our mission is this one. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish according to my gospel. Please notice that Paul says my gospel three times. Our gospel when it's together with Timothy and Silvanus, Barnabas and so forth, three times. And the preaching of Jesus Christ. So he's preaching Jesus Christ. He's not preaching himself. How? According to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. What is this? We are here to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, the revelation of the mystery. But now is made manifest and by the scripture of the prophets. According to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. So now we got obedience of faith. So you believe. And you need to know Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. And you need to receive the gospel that saves you now in this dispensation of grace to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever amen so nobody can come to my website to me personally on my Facebook on my YouTube and tell me that Jesus the Paul was not preaching the same Jesus some people try to do this to their own design English to their own loss, because Christ sent Paul, just like he sent the twelve to Israel, he sent Paul to Jews and Gentiles with the gospel of Christ. 
a great commission under grace in 2 Corinthians 5 17 and onwards therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature do you see somewhere in the letters of Paul born again I invite you to research I can help you okay I just opened this program it's called Pure Bible Search King James of course it's very simple we digit born again and see Jesus Jesus in the Gospel of John we just read it and Peter born again you never read Paul talking about being born again why because we cannot be born again <laughs> Israel my glory my son my firstborn let's see no in this moment I can't remember exactly in Exodus Israel I'll let my people go <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, let my people go, but in this moment, my memory of an old man that I am doesn't help me because Israel was the son of God. The son. Let's see. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Can't find now. <laughs> I'm searching the wrong way but please forgive me but you know I'm not gonna correct because this tell you I am very genuine I tell you as it is in this moment I can't remember but I remember that in the Exodus the Lord calls Israel his, his firstborn son or something like that they were son of God we we were never they are covenants we never had covenants anyway let's go therefore if any man be a increase in Christ is a new creature all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It's not talking about your life. It's talking about the program. This prophetic program is passed in such a way in this dispensation. The Lord will restart it after the body of Christ is formed completely, you know, and then we, we go. He said, Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Please, don't even think one moment this universalism is telling you that we have a ministry of reconciliation and the body of Christ, the believers, be, has, has been reconciled to God, to himself, by Jesus Christ. Christ died indeed for the entire world, for all mankind, for everyone. Only those who believe are saved. Or reconcile to it that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputed that trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation still the operation of God now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ stead be ye reconciled to God for he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. So we are ambassadors for Christ. We don't go preaching the gospel of the kingdom. God is not building the kingdom now. Why? They Israel reject the king and the kingdom. They crucify. They want nothing to do with him. Eh? It's clear. We want Caesar. We don't want this man to reign over us. His blood be upon us and our children and so forth. Christ prayed 
Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And he did forgive them. Otherwise, they would be wiped out of the face of the earth. But Christ, out of the seven Christ, he, he, forgave, he, he asked the Father to forgive them because they did it ignorantly, in unbelief. Just like when Paul was persecuting Christ, was persecuting the little flock. So God was in Christ has reconciled us, Jews and Gentiles who believe this gospel, that's, that's no more different, to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to which the God was in Christ, reconciled the world unto himself, not imputed that trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors, ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, because he is in heaven. We pray you in Christ's step, be reconciled to God. The universalists say everybody is reconciled, but if we pray in Christ's stead, because as, as though God beseech you by us, we pray in Christ's stead because Christ at the right hand of the Father, be reconciled to God, means even though God has provided reconciliation and is not imputing sins, if you don't believe this gospel, you're not reconciled. And then it tells you, for he, that's God the Father, has made him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous and also good in him. This who knew no sin is so important because some people from some corrupt Bibles or teachers, they think that Jesus could have seen that Jesus in reality was a sinner. No, maybe not a great sinner. That's crazy. <laughs> Jesus Christ was, is, and always be God, and even as a man, he was the perfect man, innocent. He, he didn't have the blood of Adam in his veins, but the blood of, of, the, of the Father, the blood of God that he shed to redeem us. Would you not see? Yeah, he wasn't a body in the likeness of sin for flesh. They never sinned. That we might be made the righteous and also God in him. The exchange is immense. Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It doesn't say I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the kingdom. Repent, be baptized. That is the prophetic program. The, the prophetic program has been interrupted in Acts 7 when they stone Stephen and they blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And in Acts 8, there is the persecution, they get scattered, the Jerusalem church. And in Acts 9, Christ, instead of coming down with a great tribulation, with punishment and wrath and everything, and the fireworks, he came down with a great message of grace and a call. His enemy number one, Saul of Tarsus, and made of him Paul, the apostle, preacher, the teacher of the Gentiles, who is writing now, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Simple as that. Believes what? Now we'll see. To the Jew first and also to the Greek, which means all men and women, of course. So our gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, wherein you stand. Why does he say I preached unto you? Because it's not what Christ preached. Oh, you're telling me the poor. No, I'm not. Christ gave him this gospel, just like he gave the gospel of him unto the twelve. Can you make peace with that? That Christ didn't stop talking once ascended to heaven, but continues to talk to us through the letters of Paul, when he appeared to him on the way to Damascus, and in the course of 34 years, he gave the revelations after revelation, a progressive revelation, he gave him this gospel. This pretty soon, First Corinthians, moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received. What do you receive? Jesus into your heart? No, you receive the gospel of Christ, and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved. 
No, you get in saved, you know the process to be saved. It's not probation. If you persevere to the end, nothing to do. That's prophetic. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. So if, if we believe another gospel, you have believed, yes, but in vain. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also receive. What is that, Paul? How did Christ die for our sins, according to the Scriptures? Who died for our sins? Paul, Peter, James, John, Isaiah. No. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also receive. How that? Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So, our gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe this, you are saved, and the Holy Spirit seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the perishable possession. In other words, it's the operation of God. In which you have no part whatsoever with your works, but it's the work of God. Your part, if there is a part to play, is to believe, receive. We just read it. Ephesians 2 5 says, Even when we were dead in sins, as quickened us together with Christ, and he said, By grace you are saved. And has raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. And then he says, For by grace are ye saved, present tense indicative, through faith. Now, my English syntax grammar is not very good. I don't know if I said the right thing. In Italian, say, present indicativo. Are ye saved through faith? Are ye saved now? No, you're going to get saved if you go to church, pay that. But religion, rituals, words you say, words you don't say, things you do, things you don't. For by grace you save through faith. And that not of itself, it is the gift of God. And please understand, not the faith, the salvation is the free gift of God. No the works. Less anyone should boast. Do you understand what happens? This flesh is our enemy, really, spiritually speaking. There is a contrast, there is a warfare between the flesh and the spirit. The flesh tends to boast. Well, you know. Yes, Jesus did he went to that cross, but I confess my sins. I turn from my sins, I stop sinning, I go to church, blah, 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 blah. Exaltation of me, myself, and I. No, please, no. No, the works. Less than a man should boast. You want to boast? You want to glory in something? Well, boast in the Lord and glory in Christ Jesus and what He has accomplished for your benefit, my benefit. God commands His love towards us. That why we were yet sinners, and I say, you know, reading ungodly sinners, enemies of God, as we were in other, Christ died for us. That's the demonstration. For his great love wherewith he loved us, he gave himself for our sins. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. Galatians 1 4. For where is workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works? which God has before ordained we should walk in them. Please notice the should. We're not under the law, we're under grace. We need to learn now, but we are saved and sealed independently because of what Christ has accomplished. Because he died for our sins, all of them. He was buried and he rose again the third day to justify us. Now, as I said, these are the letters we study. You see? Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, and so forth. You know, the 13 letters, Romans to Philemon. So I would say that it's simple, a simple outline here would be time pass. 
as just to come the, the past the future the but now we are here all right 34 to make all men see this is something i should have put here but to make all men see yeah and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in god who created all things by jesus christ in other words peter could not preach this gospel because the mystery was not revealed to him he had a different ministry here in the 11 and christ in his earthly ministry called him to do that then Christ wants to reveal this, which was it in God, this mystery, from the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world, there are lots and lots of scripture concerning the mystery, now revealed. But many people don't know, not because they're stupid, because if you don't get taught, or you don't know where to look at, to study, you might very well miss this. And this is really very important, because with this preaching, we have the gospel of Christ. The power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. But you got to believe how the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Thank you very much for listening. We have received the atonement, <laughs> and only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now receive the atonement. We are saved, we are sealed, we belong to love for eternity. Believe this gospel. Be saved, be sealed. And thank you very much once again.